Our scripture reading is taken from the book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 to 15. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify himself, a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. These then are the things you should teach, encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. Uh, let's welcome to the pulpit uh, Pastor Clarence Lee as he shares God's word. Uh, so happy to see Pastor Billy with us. Indeed, God has been gracious and merciful. Shall we all bow down in the word of prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we give thee thanks for once again gathering your church to bring you glory, to bring you praise. For you alone deserve all our praise. Lord, your servant is an unworthy sinner. Lord, he is a worthless worm. And yet, it is only by your pure mercy that you have even forgiven him of all his sins through the blood of your son, Christ Jesus, shed on the cross. And now, you have even entrusted him with your word to be delivered to your people. May you find him faithful in declaring your will, your truth. Prepare the hearts of your people that they may receive your word with gladness. Again, we entrust the rest of the time to your hands. All this brings you most holy name. Amen. Again, our passage for today is the whole chapter 2 of Titus. Um, today, we shall be answering one of the uh, questions we should be answering is uh, what is the real purpose of the gospel is the gospel only meant to bring us to heaven you see the churches all around the world are plagued with the idea that we receive Jesus Christ only as Savior the Lordship only comes later if you decide it's good for you. People who seem to have that distinction, division of only Lordship and then later uh, Saviorship and then later Lordship, they seem to dichotomize and say Lordship is for the disciples if you consider yourself a disciple therefore in their thinking discipleship being a disciple is a higher form of christianity because these believers have committed their life holy my friend this is heresy as christians we are all disciples so when you share the gospel, don't just share to them the way to heaven. Share to them that it is expected of you to accept Jesus Christ as the God of your life, the Lord of your life. We should no longer be sinning as a way of life. Yes, we continue to sin, but from that moment you receive Jesus Christ, you hate sin. You are so disgusted with yourself every time you commit sin. For the background of today's passage, Titus 2, the church in Crete, it's an island where uh, during the first and second missionary journey of Paul, they would pass through 
and go around the island and share the gospel, the church in Crete was plagued with false teachers, false believers, and false leaders who are teaching false gospels. False gospel, and because of that, they are living corrupted lives. They are living corrupted, ungodly lives. Paul then encouraged Titus, he left Titus there, to continue to teach and live out the right gospel, showing the true purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible, if you read through the New Testament, the Bible reveals two things that determines a false teacher or a false gospel. Many times in our modern generation, when we talk about false teachers, we are t t thinking that ah, these are the people who have a different doctrine, who teach a different doctrine. Yes, true. But if you carefully study and understand the writings of Paul, of John, of Peter, many times, most of the time they spend in revealing these false teachers, they show to us that not, not just their teaching, but their life. My friends, think, if I have a pastor who is basically preaching the right gospel, but he lives a very ungodly life, so he was trained theologically, graduate of seminary, but he continues to live a very ungodly life, a very sinful life. What the apostles is telling the church, he should not be even your leader. Why are you putting him as a leader? Why are you putting him, or why are you consider him, considering him as a teacher? You see, these two goes hand in hand. So, two things that determines a false teacher, false gospel. And most of the time, these two things go together. Number one, false teaching, doctrines. Okay? This affects salvation. Okay? So, when you have a church who teaches a false doctrine, a false Gospel, that means if you are part of that church, practically speaking, you are not saved. So all the people in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, of Kiboloi, are not saved. All. All the people in Iglesia Ni Cristo is not saved. Okay? If they follow their teaching, their doctrine, if they are really aware. Second, ungodly life. Again, if this person is living a very ungodly life, this should not be a teacher in the church. He should not be a leader in the church. So that is the the background of our text for today. Paul is dealing with the churches in Crete. He left Timothy, uh, sorry, Titus there, who is pastoring the churches. And he's telling them, he's telling Titus to remain faithful in sound doctrine. Because those leaders in the churches right now are not, they, by their life, they are showing that they are not real gospel teachers if you look at our passage for today look at the color yellow how many times do you see the word sound three times so paul is very insistent the gospel must be sound healthy this is used this word sound is used Nine times in the epistles in the New Testament. Five times is 
used in the book of Titus. And in chapter 2, we find it three times. Whenever this word is used, it is always used in the sense that the truth produces spiritual well-being. Okay, so we always ask, is it sound? Meaning, is it, is it producing what, what it's supposed to produce? Is it doing what it's supposed to do? What it is meant to do? So there's that focus on the right doctrine and theology or living good, productive lives. Now, as a church, let me ask you a trick question. Okay? If you were to choose okay, between two, would you rather have right doctrine and theology or would you have your church living good, productive lives? Huh? Of course, we want both, right? But if you were to choose one. Okay. Doctrine prerequisite for godly lives. If you are just after the God, if you just focus on godly lives, mag-Buddhist na lang tayo. Right? Again, doctrine is more important. And if we focus on doctrine, right theology, I believe, I believe, we are giving the Holy Spirit a library to work on in our hearts. To convict us of our sins. Versus that vague idea na what is good. Later we'll talk about what is good and what is godly. What's the difference? The Bible are actually argues for godliness, not goodness. Okay? Again, kung goodness lang pinag-uusapan, mas magaling yung mga tute. Right? Because they're trying to buy their way to heaven, to nirvana. So, uh, I tried to diagram our passage for today. Paul is telling Timothy, ah, Titus, you must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. And he broke down this teaching to older men, older women, younger women, younger men, and then slaves, and then to us, to different groups of people. Why? Again, the false teachers have infiltrated the family of these churches. And so, if you look at the family in the churches, major wild. So, Paul, say, uh, Paul says, you must teach. How many times? Eleven times. You must teach. Teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. Right doctrine that produces godly life. So first, he deals with the older men. The older men, how do we consider older men? Over 60. So, hindi pa ako. <laughs> Young men pa ako. Uh, but I would like to be considered older men, if you look at it. Okay? Older men should be temperate. Nephalius in, in Greek. It's, it means sober, vigilant, and clear-headed. Okay, so sober, vigilant, and then clear-headed. And then worthy of respect, in Greek, seminus. It's dignified, serious-minded. Again, this word is actually repeated for the, the, the different groups. Okay? It's a requirement for the different groups, the older men, the older women, the younger men. We are to be worthy of respect, dignified. People would respect you. People would look up to you. Serious-minded. It's not that we don't crack jokes, but you are known to be someone to go to when people want an honest opinion, a healthy opinion. 
The opposite of these are clowns. Okay? Ah, wag ka pupunta dyan. Kalokohan lang makukuha mo dyan. That's the, I, that's the opposite of this word. You're not supposed to be clowns, but you are supposed to be worthy of respect. By the way, when we go through this, yung opposite, ibig sabihin, yung mga false teacher, yun yun. So yung mga false teacher, patawa ng patawa. And people like that, right? And then, the third is self-control. Sapronas in Greek. Sensible. You make sense. You see, the church will always face troubles. We need people who are sensible, who talks sense. And then sound in faith, in love, and in endurance. Sound in faith means trusting in God. He trusts in God. Okay? Uh, whenever there's a problem, the first thing, the most important thing is that he relies on God. He trusts in God. Second is sound in love. This word, of course, is agape. Again, it's all give. There are three loves word use okay in greek it's eros phileo and then agape eros is erotic love all take <laughs> this is what you call puppy love ha? gusto ko eh gusto ko eh okay. <laughs> and then phileo love is brotherly love it's a give and take okay but Agape love is all give, sacrificial love. Older men have gone through all those years and they should have learned as a Christian what it means to really love in the Lord. And then to endure, sound in endurance. To persevere patiently as we wait for our hope in Christ Jesus. We should persevere. Uh, the word means to carry a load, uh, a heavy load for a long period of time. Yesterday, while I was driving, I was reflecting on this. And I'm known to be, uh, 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 I can take pain. Okay? Uh, mataas ang to pain tolerance ko. But then, when I really think about what happened in my life? Uh, I, can, uh, I can hit the wall. It's painful, but I like it. <laughs> but what I cannot bear is yung slow pain, small, slow pain, na pangmatagalan. Enduring. So, yun yung problema. It's the enduring. The pain is there and you don't know when it will last. Ah, when it will stop. Okay. So, again, it's being, everyone can, can somehow uh, kaya ang tiisin yung pain. But again, for a long period of time, no, without knowing when will be the relief is the problem. And we should all learn perseverance. Patiently waiting for our hope in Jesus Christ. You see, for the older men, years should have already brought not just an increasing intolerance, but an increasing tolerance and sympathy for the views and the mistakes of others. So you want to see God Godly older men in the church who have grew up gracefully over the years in the Lord. Who are able to, to accept the mistake, the views of others, and just smile if it differs with him. Because, nadaanan ko na yan eh. Sige, bata ka pa. I'll just give you time. We know better, right? 
So that is for the older men. Now, for the older women, they are to be reverent in the way they live. Meaning, again, dignified, worthy of respect, respectable in a godly sense. And not to be slanderers. In Greek, it's me diabolus. <laughs> From where we got the word diablo. During that time, by the way, this word is used 34 times in the New Testament to describe Satan. <laughs> Many times to describe Satan. So, dati pa pala, in the New Testament, in, the, in our Bible, yung the word marites <laughs> is already used very frequently. Slanderers. The Bible calls these slanderers, mga marites, a uh, little devils. They are me diabolos. Satan is the arch slanderer. He likes to malicious gossip, to destroy people. Again, older women should have grew up gracefully to be not slanderers. Hindi dapat tayong marites. And then, not addicted to too much wine. This means you are not enslaved with wine. Can we drink wine? Yes. But not enslaved to wine. Of course, this doesn't just involve wine. This involves other um, toxic substance, right? To teach what is good. Uh, in Greek, Kalo didas kalos to teach what is good things that pleases God. Okay? that means we study the Word of God, we practice it. Uh, that's my message for two months from now. <laughs> uh, we should have studied the Word of God, practice it ourselves, and then we are able to teach to other people. And then, because we ourselves have practiced and learned and practiced godliness in our lives, then we are able to train younger women by example. People will only listen to us if they see what we are teaching in our lives. To encourage them to fulfill their responsibilities. Uh, throughout the years of ministering in different churches, one of the people always ask, you know, what kind of small groups is the best? So far, uh, from my experience, and I've gone through many churches, what we have seen is the best cell groups are intergenerational. Meaning, in that cell group, merong young people, older men, older women, Okay, younger men, adult, intergenerational. The young can teach the older men about the new things in life. Okay, and the older men, older women can, the older generation can guide the teens of today. So far, we have seen very active, very faithful group who are intergenerational versus those na yung couple couple lang and they go through all those years puro couple material couple material bakit tungkol couple lang bang buhay <laughs> right again uh, intergenerational and they just study the bible and learn from it together so again Paul encourages Titus to tell, to teach the older women to be, to set a good example for the younger women so that they can uh, train the younger women. So for the younger women, Paul says they should be able to love 
their husband and children. Uh, just this verse alone should take 10 messages, 10 sermons. This is a very controversial, of course we all know that, this is a very controversial passage. For younger women to love, to accept their husband, Hirap, no? uh, to love phileo their husbands and children to put others first before self-interest younger women as designed by god should be able to serve the family to put the family first yes i know i acknowledge that a lot of our women, younger women today, are far greater than us younger men. Aminin natin yan. Okay. But again, it is a God-given role for them to serve the family. To, to be self-controlled. Again, uh, sopronas in Greek, and to be pure. Hagnas, to be sensible, self-controlled, and then to be busy at home. Oikorgos in Greek, producers of orderliness in the home, not exclusively with household chores, but they they're supposed to be uh, homemaking is supposed to be a priority, a primary ministry. Again, what, I'm, what Paul is saying, well, during that time, their culture is different. Uh, but again, it's not bound with culture. People say it's because women during that time were not educated. They were not given opportunity to, to get education. And their culture is men over women. Again, when the Bible commands that, it is not bound by culture it is a general rule meaning women is designed by god to be under men and so you just have to uh, accept that and serve faithfully in the capacity that god has allowed you to serve in the family yes you are more intelligent mas magaling but again Younger women should learn to be able to, uh, to, to, to function well in that role that God has given her. Producers of orderliness in the home. Helping, now, the question here, one of the questions here is, uh, are women of today allowed to be uh, to go out and work. Okay? Uh, helping with family income is possible. And in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, there are examples. Uh, yes. uh, Proverbs 31 tells us that women are, are supposed to be God, good investors. Okay? Uh, helping out in the family income is possible. If agreed with the husband, again, you should agree with your, the husband should agree that it would be helpful. But again, the primary goal is to, for the, for, for the family, for the home to be peaceful. If you, if you're working outside would only disorganize the home, then I don't, I don't think that would be right. Ang daming tanong, no? Again, this is a very controversial verse that needs many uh, sermons. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, to be kind. We should be kind with our actions, with our words to people. To be subject to their husbands. This is the controversial part. Uh, 
to submit to God's ordained authority or order for the family rather than the husband's worth or performance. There's, there are a lot of divorce cases right now. Why? Because we seem to think our partner is not worthy of us. He's just bringing me down. Again, this is that, that uh, order of the husband over the wife is a God-ordained authority for the family which God has instituted. And your submitting, women, your submitting to your husband is not dependent on their performance or their worth or their intelligence. But to accept the husband's thoughts, feelings, decisions, and failures. Churches everywhere don't know very well that my wife is far better than me. Okay? Ako puro red uh, sa report cards. Siya, valedictorian. Magna cum laude, UP. Uh, buti na lang, she puts up with me. <laughs> Again, it's not because of my worth, but it is she submits to God's ordained authority and order. Then there will be peace in the family. When Eve sinned, Adam and Eve ate the fruit, right? When Eve sinned, one of the punishment that God gave Eve is your desire will be for your husband. What, what is that desire for your husband? Is it, oh, I fall in love, uh, head over heels for you. Oh, gusto kita. I cannot live without you. No. Because the next chapter deals with, so very vague yung word na desire. Your desire will be for your husband. Ano ibig sabihin nun? But in the next chapter, it talks about um, the punishment for Cain. Sin is crouching at the door and its desire is for you. So what does that mean? Sin is waiting like a lion at the door and it is waiting to pounce on you. So apply that idea to, the, to Eve. Your desire for, for your husband is you would want to pounce on your husband. Gusto mo going under desire. You would like to overrule his authority. And so, again, we should just submit to God's given authority and order. For younger men, Uh, for younger men, again, there's that to be self-controlled. Why? Because younger men are reckless, unrestrained in conduct. Okay, mga binata jan, very reckless. Go, go, go. Unrestrained. That's why I want to be identified with the older men. <laughs> uh, so, again, we are bound to be clowns, to make a fool of ourselves because we are reckless. But we are called to be self-controlled. As Christians, with the right gospel, we are required to be self-controlled. To set them an example. Uh, this is for, Timothy, uh, for Titus to use himself as, as a young man himself. To set an example for the young men in the church in doing what is good. Titus is supposed to encourage young men by setting himself as an example. To lead by example. Uh, we need to see to be able to follow. In everything in your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned. Why? Because this world, 
this corrupted world is just waiting for the opportunity to condemn us and tell us, is that what Christianity really is? I look at your life and it doesn't equate with what you are saying. So integrity is consistency even when nobody is looking or when nobody even knows. Seriousness is dignified, again, not clowns. Speech that cannot be legitimately criticized. Again, people will always throw accusations to us, Christians, because they hate the gospel. When you sh really share the right gospel, it attacks their lifestyles. And they would just want to, to, to throw accusations and criticize us. The Bible tells us, let it not be a legitimate critis uh, criticism. Let it be a lie. Kaisa totoo. Then slaves. Again, why slaves? Because again, during that time, household have slaves. And the slaves were influenced by these false teachers to go against their, 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 their owners, their boss. Sige, ipaglaban mo, karapatan mo yan. Kristiyano ka na, you are no longer a slave, you are free in Christ. So, to the slaves, as a Christian slave, Paul tells them to be subject to their master in what? To only the good? No, in everything. Submit in everything, not just the good ones. To try to please them. Not to talk back to them. Sometimes, no, yung mga katulong natin, feeling nila ka-equal na natin, sumasagot-sagot na. <laughs> uh, feeling equal and entitled, right? Again, they should learn that there is still, we treat them right, but they should not abuse that order, right? We treat them right, we consider them as family, but again, always learn that there is that order and respect should be given. Not to steal from them, meaning they must be trustworthy. Uh, as Chinese businessmen, why do we prefer kamag-anak? Trustworthy. Yeah? Uh, of, of course, not always the case. But because you are of blood, trustworthy, katiwala. What Paul is saying is you should be able to show to your masters that you are trustworthy. Pwede ka pagkatiwalaan. And those are the kinds of people we want to handle our business, right? Um, I used to remember my father telling us, uh, we had the hardware, and then he would tell us, oh, uh, this one and this one, you, they can be trusted. We've tested them many times already. They can really be tested. Uh, they can be trusted. But to show that they can be fully trusted. So as a believer, we are called to a higher standard. Okay. And then, why is Paul saying this? Because in the Hellenistic household, false teachers have instigated disruption in the Cretan household. Again, the false teachers have yun, ginagatong the slaves. Sige, paglaban niyan. Okay, and so it is ruining household. And then, to us, it teaches us to say no ungodliness and worldly passions what is ungodliness and worldly passion romans chapter 1 verse 18 for the wrath of god is being revealed under heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men so 
the, the problem of this world is two things. Godlessness, meaning you put God out of the equation. You put God out in everything. And then wickedness. Sinfulness. Sinful living. And to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. So what is the difference between goodness and godliness? The world can determine by their own standard what is good and what is not. Just like the Buddhists came up with their uh, teachings about goodness to treat others fairly and everything. Yes, that somehow is in line with the Bible. But godliness, what we are taught is to practice godliness. Meaning you do your good thing with God in mind as your master, as your Lord. Let me illustrate it this way. If um, Steve Jobs, yeah, uh, an atheist, donates one billion dollar, and here is the church janitor who loves God, who worships God, donates ten peso. What is accepted by God? The 10 peso because it is done as an act of worship to God. This may seem like a good work, but God says, this, your good works are like dirty rags in my eyes. It is done with sinful intent. Maybe you want to get rich, uh, you want to, to, to get something to be healed of your liver cancer, or maybe to to make you just feel good about yourself. So that's the difference. We are not after goodness, we are after godliness in our lives. Meaning, very conscious that we are doing everything in obedience to God. The reason for the gospel, first, towards men. Yung mga so that, so that na yan. You see the passage, right? There's that so that, so that. So that no one will malign the word of God. People of this corrupted sinful world are naturally inclined to discredit the word of God, which condemns their actions and lifestyles. And so, we should be careful with how we live our Christian life so that no one will be, a, be able to malign the word of God. Yan ba? Yan ba yung tinuturo ng Bible? And then second, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. The world is naturally our enemies. They will throw accusations and insults. Let us not give them the legitimate grounds to discredit us and the word of God, the gospel. To make a positive impact on unbelievers, ah, sorry, uh, so that in every way, they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive. This is given to the slaves. You do your best to be honest, to show yourself to be trustworthy, so that you will make the teaching about God our Savior, attractive. To make a positive impact on unbelievers observing us. Again, your friends, your unbelieving friends, who knew, who knows you are a believer, is slowly observing you. Ayaw, ayaw pa yan ng gospel. But over the years, they're looking at you. And looking at your life, whether you are, there's a difference. And God will always throw problems in, in their life. Come the time that in Pompia, they, they, they hit the wall, they have nothing to run, nowhere to run to, 
they would be reminded that there is this friend who is a believer who is very consistent with his life and he would ask us why every good work we do must be done with a gospel intent again uh, the philippine is always uh, uh ano with mga calamities right and we often give mga charity right donations and then uh, relief packs i always say every good work must be done with the gospel intent you should not just be handing thousands of pesos wala lang but every cent every peso given should have a gospel intent now listen it may not be immediate it may not be immediate but when you give even though you don't share the gospel you pray to god lord sana in many years from now this could be used this would have an effect on that person i'm giving it should be part of the equation the gospel intent not just moralistic bigay lang ng bigay <clears throat> a few years ago we had an argument with a pastor because of the word palatable i said we make we must make the gospel more palatable palatable meaning more acceptable by the way we live and he attacked me and said you cannot add anything to the gospel churches everywhere know that my gospel is a very hard gospel okay i'm very strong with the way i preach sin and repentance and this person just attack me and said we cannot add anything on the gospel now, let's just be clear with this when i say palatable we are not sugar coating the gospel to remove the gospel must be kept pure and complete to remove anything from the gospel is wrong the gospel itself must be pure you have to talk about sin the need for salvation but here the bible tells us this verse is telling us that the way we live could discredit or make the gospel more appealing you keep on sharing the gospel yet yes it is pure it is right but the bible tells us paul tells us with the lives of the slaves they can make the gospel more appealing or not so that is what we meant by making the gospel more palatable towards god towards god paul says for the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men god initiated our redemption sanctification and glorification god intervened mahiya ka naman God is the one who initiated this salvation. And you would continue to live your life in sin? Mahiya ka naman. That is what Paul is saying. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that is his very own eager to do what is good so what is the purpose of the gospel to bring murderers rapists to heaven like kiboloi no he'll burn in hell what does it say here to he who, jesus gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness from all our sinfulness to purify for himself a people called 
as his very own, eager to do what is good. So is lordship an a, 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 a alternative? No, it is a requirement. The reason God saves us is so that we can be His people eager to do what is good, called His very own, purified. Our salvation comes with a very heavy price, the death of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. His purpose is clearly to redeem us from our wickedness and sinfulness and to purify for Himself a people to call His own, a life characterized by godliness. And then he says, while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We hope for the promised reward that comes with the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 6 and 7 tells us, In this you greatly rejoice, though for now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials these has come these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may be proven genuine may prove to be genuine uh, and may result in praise and glory and honor when jesus christ is revealed And then Paul ends with saying, These then are the things you should teach, encourage, and rebuke with all authority. This is the right gospel. And you would know the right gospel if first the doctrine is right, it is sound, and then you look at the life. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. Teach, encourage, and rebuke with all authority. So as a conclusion, uh, in MGC New Life, where my wife is now teaching, I used to be a teacher there for more than te uh, about 10 years. Uh, we had an, ano, uh, a new, well, new para sa akin, but <laughs> matagal na pala, yung driver. They got a driver, and more than five years now with us. I think, my ten ba? My ten years na. Recently got baptized. A few months back. Three months back. Got baptized. Ten years with the school. In his testimony when he was baptized, sabi niya, he praised God because he got hired by the school and then the school is big on sharing the gospel. Day in and day out. Sharing the gospel. Makita mo talaga yung priority is the gospel. During Christmas, any opportunity, share the gospel to people outside, inside and everything. To parents and everything. He's the driver. He comes in every day, brings teachers in and out of the school, brings students in and out of the school. Samya, all these years, he's observing quietly he's looking at the lives of these teachers these office staffs these students are they really living out what they are preaching and his conclusion in the span of 10 years yes and that's why he decided to be baptized as a christian my friends People around you are looking at our lives. Yes, we are so big in sharing the gospel. But again, does our life show the real gospel? Everything we are doing, every breath you take, should be done with the gospel intent. Pray to God, Lord, yes, I'm giving food, to the needy right now. I may not share the gospel, but 
someone plants, someone seeds, someone waters, and then one day, the gospel will grow. Let's all pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we give thee thanks that through your word, you reminded us of the purpose of the gospel. That first, it must be sound, it must be pure. And that it is by design supposed to affect our very lives. For you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ. You have initiated our salvation. Sending your Son to die for our sins. So that you may redeem us and to purify for yourself. A people willing to do what is good. And so we offer each one of us into your hands, Lord. Use us mightily, O Lord, for your glory, for your gospel. Let our lives be a pleasing aroma that rises to you. And one day, we just want to hear those words, Well done, my good and faithful servant. All this praying in Jesus' most holy name. Amen.